Hi there. This is the last episode of the series of 13 episodes in the Brain Power series. We have spoken about 13 or 12 other things, and at this section, we're going to talk about renewing your mind. The really the, the cherry on the cake. We spoke about the power of freedom with our last um, session. And just to recap a little bit, you could set up yourself for success or failure. Setting yourself up for success means that God wants you to be a winner. And if you know that he wants you to be a winner, you could really set yourself up for that. It's not too late to make changes in your life. We need an attitude of integrity, really something we need in our society today. And yes, it is all in, it starts in the mind. I need to make a decision. I want to live differently. I want to do things differently. And then we, we underestimate deferred satisfaction. If we would really not just live for the moment, but for what could be in the future, things would look much differently. Now, in this session, we're going to focus on Romans 12, verse 1 and verse 2. We're going to really dissect this, um, this two verses and look at the meaning of it. Let's start off with uh, Romans 12, verse 1. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, in order to prove by you what is it that is good and pleasing and the perfect will of God. Now, when I think of renewing the mind, there are certain characteristics of a, a new mind that comes up. And the first one I think of is new direction. If I've got a renewed mind, I would have new direction. I would have new goals in life. I would have new motivation. You know, there's a difference than, than just, you know, getting through the exam, or getting the best mark. There's a difference in having motivation to do something and just do it because I have to do it. It also gives me a new quality of life. And I must tell you, honestly, it is great to live a good quality of life. Thinking of where I came from, not living that good quality of life, and actually getting cancer as a reward of bad choices. I also know that renewing the mind means new joy, real joy, inside joy, really enjoying what you do, your work, your, your family, your, your church, your fellowship. Enjoy all of that. That is so great. And then new freedom. We need new freedom. When we have a new mind, we will have new freedom. And this is really where we looked at and what we looked at in the previous um, sessions as we've gone on. Let's start with Romans 12 verse 1. And let's pull it apart a bit and look at this renewing of the mind that God is really encouraging us. Let's look at uh, verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore. I beseech you. Beseech means I press on your heart. I encourage you. In some translations, it comes out uh, stronger. It says, I'm warning you. So I'm warning you. I'm, I'm encouraging you, therefore, brothers. We could add sisters, yeah. Uh, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, the, by the mercies of God, you know, by everything in His merciful uh, kindness, Please, guys, give your body as a living sacrifice. And it also says it should be a sacrifice. 
we have to give our bodies as a sacrifice. And then in that, we would have a living body. We would have a holy body. This is a strong word, holy. You know, we always think, no, no, God is holy. But God says we should have a holy body. We should have a pleasing body. And that would be our reasonable service. Well, that is your act of worship, some of the translations would say. So when I give my body as a living, holy, pleasing sacrifice, that is really my act of worship. Let's go to verse 2 and look at this um, a little bit uh, more. And do not be conformed. Don't be like the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we, we looked at body. Verse 2, we look at mind. We need to have a renewed mind. And that mind would be good. That mind would be pleasing. And the scripture says it would be perfect. And it would be in the perfect will of God. Now, when I look at the will of God, I know that when we live in the will of God, it means it is the highest position for any creature. We could get nowhere closer to God than if we are in the will of God. Now, let's form a picture. We're going to draw some pictures. And remember, in the previous sessions, we spoke about this so many times. We say, guys, our brains works in pictures it works in colors it works in circles linear format is really not how our brain operates well when we look at this picture i rem I, I know that you're going to remember these two verses very well let's look at this balance between verse one and verse two verse one spoke about the body that sacrifice we have to give and that is your act of worship in the second verse we need to have a renewed mind. And this mind would be good, perfect, and pleasing, and in the will of God. The highest position, as we say, for any created being. Now, look at the similarity, this parallel we have between these two verses. Our body would be living. Our mind would be good, beautiful, beautiful put. Our bodies would be holy. Our minds would be perfect in the will of God our bodies would be pleasing pleasing to ourselves pleasing to others pleasing to God our minds would be pleasing pleasing to ourselves others and God this is a beautiful picture and I I just can imagine you know the excitement when God created us you see when Jesus created the earth and man it was to be perfect and God created man in his image. Is God perfect? Yes, God is perfect. Genesis 1 verse 7. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. He created them male and female. Both of them perfect. Genesis 1 verse 31. God exclaims and he says, ah, And God saw everything that he made. And behold, look, it was very good. We are created in God's image. Very good, perfect, pleasing. Now, this article in Review and Herald, volume 3, page 265, gives an idea of what God really created us as. Man was the crowning act of the creation of God. Made in the image of God and designed to be the counterpart of God. Wow, this is deep. We are not only the image of God, but we are the counterpart of God. But look at this downside of this. But Satan has labored. He's really put effort in to obliterate the image of God in man. And do an imprint of his own image on human beings. Wow. Romans 1 verse 22 and 23 says, 
professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the cor incorruptible God into an image made. Now, now this goes to, wow, uh, you, you should open your Bible and just see this is true. Professing to be wise, they became fools, changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. Satan wants you to be and the image of God in you to be like a corruptible man. But that's not far down enough for Satan. Like birds and like four-footed animals and like creeping things. He wants to change this image that portrays God's perfection. He wants to change that so that you would look like a bird or a four-footed animal or a creeping thing. You know, I, I, I want you just to think of how somebody looks when he's drunk. You know, it's, it's more like an animal. And this is really Satan's work. He puts things in our lives so that he can distort this image of God. God was so proud when he, when he, when he created us and he saw it was good. It was very good. Satan tries to just change that and make something else of it. Well, another statement that really is profound is, and we have looked at this in the previous episodes, as he which hath called you is holy, so you be holy. We should be holy. God created us in his image, perfect, pleasing, and he is saying we should be holy as he is holy. So be holy in all manner of conversation. Give up now and forever wrong habits. Change those things. Don't be like Satan wants you to be. Take yourself to task. You need to discipline yourself. Lift your cross. Deny self. Control yourself. And then there will be an opportunity for Christ to let his mind be in you. We go back to Philippians 2 verse 5 that says, Let this mind be in you which also is in Christ Jesus. I pray in my own heart on a daily basis, Lord, please be in me. Come in me. Work through my mind so that I could be more like you. We also looked in the previous episodes that the crown of the brain is the frontal lobe. This is where our spirituality is seated. This is where morality is. The willpower is. Motivation, reasoning, judgment is all seated there. God has created us so that he would have somebody to communicate with. And this is the connection that we have with God. Right through our frontal lobe. While Satan tries to obliterate that, he uses every little thing to change this image so that we wouldn't see God and His creative power in us. Now, let's go to verse 2 and, 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 and really dissect a little bit more. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Now, let's draw the picture further. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't do the things that the world does. Be different. Deuteronomy 14 verse 2 says, For you are holy people to Jehovah your God, and Jehovah has chosen you to be peculiar people to himself above all the nations on the earth. You're different. You are peculiar. It's a, it's a very interesting word. I love this word peculiar. Different than all the others. Let's focus on that. Are you, are you peculiar? Are you different as a human being? Yes, I am obedient to God's law. That makes me different to many other people. I might say this. Or I could say, you know, I love the Lord. That makes a difference because not all people love the Lord. Well, in the Old Testament, when a person would answer this, he would have probably said, yes, I keep the seventh day Sabbath. That means I'm different, I'm peculiar. Or I don't eat pork, this is why I am different. 
the question I need to ask you today, is this difference all God calls for? Is that the only difference that God calls for? Exodus 15 verse 26, profound text. And he said, this is God speaking, if you will carefully listen to the voice of Jehovah your God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his laws, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am Jehovah who heals you. Now, the Egyptians got certain diseases because they have not kept to his instruction. And, you know, I don't know if you're curious. I'm very curious. I did the research to find out what did these Egyptians die of that, uh, that diseased them. And I found something very interesting. You see, with the mummies kept well, you could put them through the MR scans. You could do blood tests, even DNA tests today. And they found these mummies died of arthrosclerosis, something very familiar in our society today. They died of heart disease. We all know somebody that have died of heart disease. They died of diabetes. They died of cancer. Well, we, I nearly died of cancer. They died of obesity. And yes, stress. And yes, well, even tooth decay. The Lord says, I will not bring these diseases on you if you would keep my commandments, if you would keep my instructions, you would not get these diseases. I know today that I got this disease because I've really not obeyed God's instruction for my own life. We say we are peculiar. I am maybe peculiar, but... I am as diseased as everybody else. We are as tired as everybody else. People are tired. I see them early in the morning already being tired. People are depressed. We say we're different, but we're depressed like anybody else. We're as guilt-ridden as everybody else. We are as, as anxious as everybody else. As uncertain as as everybody else there. We've got an uncertain lifestyle. We've got an uncertain community. We've got an uncertain world. We, as, we are as uncertain as everybody else. We are as, as fearful for all the unknown factors as anybody else. We are as angry with everything as anybody else. Why are we need not peculiar? I want to make a statement saying we are not peculiar. I believe it's because we have not given our bodies as a living sacrifice. You know, we've got this mind connection, but not this body sacrifice at the end of the day. The picture says, when, when God created us, He created us with a living body and a good mind, a holy body, a perfect mind, a pleasing body, pleasing mind let's look at this verse a little bit further it says renewing your mind in order to prove to you what is it that is the good and the perfect will of God we are what we are as Christians called to even prove to the world what God and his image is about Look at 1 Corinthians 4 verse 9 with me. It says, For I think that God has set forth us last. Now Paul is really saying, Guys, you know, there's a problem here. I think God has set us, uh, us forth as last. The apostles, as it were appointed to death, for we have become a spectacle to the world and to the angels and to men. People look at us. We should give the example. Well, this little quotation out of Councils on Health, very, very good book. I can really recommend it. It says, if Seventh-day Adventists practiced 
what they profess to believe, if they were sincere health reformers, they would indeed be a spectacle to the world, to the angels, and to men. We should be an example, showing the pace, giving an idea of what the image of God is about. And they would show a far greater zeal for salvation of those who are ignorant for the biblical truth. If they would be in this form God really calls us to be. Here's another statement on page 187 of Medical Ministry. It says, The Lord desires through His people to answer Satan's charges by showing the result of obedience to right principles. You've seen in the previous episodes... We really stress this principle against the feeling issue. We really need to have our principles in place. The statement goes on, they are to give character to the work which must be carried forward in these last days in restoring man through a reformation of the habits, appetites, and passions. Seventh-day Adventists are to be represented to the world by the advanced principles of health which God has given us. You see, here 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. We talk a lot, but we've lost the power. As Christians, we have lost the power. The church of Christ is organized for service. That's a call to medical Evangelism and health education. The Church of Christ is organized for service. Its watchword is ministry. They are not only to minister the people, but to teach them to minister. They should not only give instructions and write principles, but educate their hearers to impart these principles. And then, here's the crux. Truth that is not lived, that is not imparted, loses its life-giving power, its healing virtue, its blessing can be retained only as it is shared. If I don't live it, then I lose the power. James 1 verse 22 says, But become doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You know, sometimes as Christians we say, No, we do this, we do that. But do we really do it? We say things, but we don't do it. When it comes to healthy living, you know, we profess to be health inclined, but do we really live healthy? Take you back to 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20. It says, for the kingdom of God is not in words. Talk, 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 talk. But it's in power. You see, the power is when I do it. I cannot expect a brain to work properly. If I don't look after it, if I don't care for it, and I'm basically assisting Satan to obliterate the image that he really wants me to portray. I want you just to, to look at this for a moment with me. This unit between the body and the mind Put together, remember that balance between body living, mind good, body holy, mind perfect, body pleasing, mind pleasing. That in its, in, 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 in a one package, that is God's image. I believe we are not portraying God's image. Because sometimes we have a mind religion, a mind sacrifice a mind commitment but we have not committed we have not sacrificed our body as a living holy pleasing sacrifice to god if we would make a change of mind and put this whole package together and realize there's a balance between this body and mind we would really portray the image that god wants us to portray to those that we meet up with. And this is really where the power and the strength lies. I want you to think about Jesus for a moment. You know, he did everything in his possible might to save you and me. 
You know, when he was hanging there on the cross, they offered him some vinegar just to relieve the pain. It was the painkiller of the time. It was the morphine of the time. And as he hung there on the cross, dying, not for himself, for me, for you. While he was hanging there, they offered him, he refused the vinegar. I always wondered why. I mean, I knew, I, I know what pain is. I suffered with pain. Today, when I look back at this, I realize that Jesus could not afford the risk of using the tranquilizer of the time and his mind would not be working perfectly as it should. Making the right decisions, the biggest, biggest decision ever that, that holds you and me in it. You see, I believe when he hung there, he said no because Arnold's, his life, his future, his existence hangs on this decision. I cannot afford making a mistake. And he refused it. Everything was done so that I would come. Jesus did everything, even refused the painkiller at the time, so that I would come. I pray that you would make decisions today that would be everlasting in the result. Choose to live the way Jesus wants you to live. Live by principle rather than feeling. Please remember your only connection with God is through your brain nerve found right there in our frontal lobes. If you would do something that would compromise that, you would compromise the biggest, most rewarding, most loving, most wonderful relationship that you could ever imagine having. And that is with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Stay focused. Stay blessed. Is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Amen.